My name is Maaike van der Hoorn, KLM uh, User Insights within the Digital Department. And today I'd like to tell you a little bit more about how we do uh, use qualitative online research and how we try to do that a little bit differently to suit uh, our needs. Um, user insights, I, I, I never liked that term because we're not talking about users, we're not talking about passengers, we're not talking about Flying Blue members, we're talking about people and about customers. But my title is User Insights, but what does it actually mean? It means that I try to understand our customers' experience, customers of Air France and KLM, on our digital touch points. So the website, the app, uh, onboard, uh, uh, interactions uh, uh, that we do. Uh, in fact, anything with a screen and where KLM and Air France interact with customers digitally. Can you hear me, by the way? Because this, this thing is horrible. I feel really trapped. But uh, do let me know if, if you don't. Um, so the digital department is responsible for, uh, for our website, for our app, uh, check-in machines, etc. And my colleagues build, uh, build websites, uh, maintain it, but also do uh, develop new propositions for our customers, new services, new ideas. And it's a large department of about uh, 100 people. Um, I've also noticed, I've been working in research for 15 years now, for both at the agency side and both outside of e-commerce, but I've noticed it places quite different uh, uh, criteria on market research. It needs to be really super fast. It needs to suit with their uh, mindset. I have 100 colleagues who are quite young, who want to change the world, who want to move fast and break things, and research needs to fit in their way of working. And that also means we needed to do things a little bit differently um, uh, compared to how we did it. So first a little bit about KLM and about the context. Uh, we have almost 30 million passengers each year and that also poses a, 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 um, a challenge to research because only 30% of our customers is Dutch. So everything that I do, my colleagues do, needs to have an international uh, perspective. 134 destinations, over 70 countries. So we need to do research that captures that whole worldwide perspective. Um, and I need to advise my colleagues about how to include that perspective on our website and how to cater to the needs of all those different nationalities, people, different needs, not just the Dutch perspective. Um, at KLM, we... Um, we aim to be innovative, we aim to be efficient, we aim to be the most customer-friendly airline in the world. And not only our staff will do anything to achieve that, but also at the digital department, we're working hard to make that happen, to make our website as relevant as possible, as personalized as possible, um, and to give our passengers the idea that we really know them and really know their needs at that specific moment. Uh, so we're doing a lot of, uh, we're, of course, we're doing a lot of cool stuff. Um, we're also doing screwing up from time to time. This is a photo from the Ash Cloud. Luckily, that's already quite some years ago. But things like this still happen worldwide. Well, maybe not every day, but often. Things do go wrong. Um, during the Ash Cloud, when all our call centers were down, all our, our regular customer care channels were down, uh, we, we had a problem. This showed us the p huge potential of social media uh, and was really a turning point for KLM. Uh, but that's, uh, in fact, another story. Um, but ha ha we, we are working to uh, avoid uh, situations like that. And we're, of course, working every day to improve our website and our app, our checking machine, everything that we do digitally, digitally which is more and more um, as, uh, as KLM. So how do we avoid things like this happening and how do we improve ourselves each, each day? We need the customer. Uh, we need to learn from our customers and we have of course a variety of ways to do that. We do surveys, you see a little example of that here. Um, we, we do A-B testing, but we also use social media cases. We read them and we use them for analysis and insights. We also have a feedback button on our website delivering a lot of qual insights. But what we were lacking was a way to include the customers in development of our digital services. 
and that's the story of, um, of today. Um, so we have a lot of research tools, Quant and Qual. What we feel is really important for those research tools is that they're super customer friendly. We cannot get away with long and boring 20 minute questionnaires anymore. So we did our best to improve that. You see a little screenshot of our Quant survey here. Uh, but also in the way we do our qual research, we try to be as super customer friendly as possible to uh, basically set the same standards for research that we're doing for our online product. So we are really cr we have a team of, of 10 user experience specialists working on our website. So why not use their knowledge when we're doing research? So Everything that we do in the research department, we try to set ourselves the same standards as we do for our website and, um, and apps. So it needs to be super design. It needs to be super easy to use for customers. Um, and, uh, uh, and it needs to fit with, with, with what we want to be as KLM. Um, Something that we also try to do is, as KLM as a whole, is trying to connect our customers with our staff. We try to empower our staff so that they can help our customers anywhere uh, in the customer journey. This we also want to apply to research. So what we wanted to, what we set out to do was enable our, my, our business, my colleagues who are working on the website every day, product designers, user experience people, uh, technical developers even, we wanted to directly connect them with our customers without the market researchers in between. Um, so what we set out to do was to find a way to have an online uh, uh, platform. Uh, uh, of course, we have uh, online, online communities, uh, usually with moderators uh, forming a barrier between business and customers. But what we wanted to do was to build a platform where people in my digital department can interact with customers themselves, which was pretty scary for me at first because I'm a researcher and I think I have special skills that set me apart from the rest of my colleagues, enabling me to talk to customers properly and to really understand their needs. So I was scared, but still, I did also see that by putting me or a moderator between the business and the customers, there was a barrier there, limiting the impact of, uh, of our qual research. So we wanted to do that, uh, that differently. Um, at the digital department, um, we, we well, de had developed uh, the apps and the website, cool new features on our website, and we wanted to talk to our customers throughout this development cycle. So we wanted to be able to talk to customers in the development phase using qual research. We wanted to be able to innovate and think of new products with our customers to do co-creation. We also wanted to include our customers during product development. So really having customers talking about our visuals, about our designs, about our interactions, about our flows. And also be able to talk to customers in a qualitative way when we're doing, uh, when products are live, when the website is up in the air. We want to talk to our customers about it in a, uh, and, and use it for qualitative research. Um, and it's important to note that at KLM we have a traditional market research uh, online community in place, consisting of about 400 people who interact with moderators online. Um, but the drawback of that is, is that there are people who are very connected to your brand. Often people are flying once a week, maybe even more. People know our product very well. For our digi my digital colleagues, this is a problem because we're not looking for the reactions of people who know our website better than we do. We're looking for people who have fresh minds, who don't know what to expect when they come to our website because that's the target group that's the most difficult for us to please. Yeah, if someone who's not been on our website ever before, he needs to understand our website or our app immediately as well. So the, the, the market research uh, online community that we have in place at Air France KLM didn't really suit the needs of our digital, um, uh, digital department. We need fresh uh, customer minds. 
We also need to be really fast. My colleagues work uh, uh, in a, uh, have an agile way of working, which means they have sprints of two weeks. In these two weeks, they'll think of concepts and they'll build it. So within these two weeks, the customer needs to be there to give feedback about concepts, visuals, actual uh, uh, betas. So um, at, at some point about a year ago, we noticed that um, we, we needed to do something differently. We couldn't use the traditional research community that we had in place. Uh, our current tools weren't sufficient enough. So we set out to find something different, uh, ending up at the KLM lab and um, built something new called the KLM lab. And it's basically comparable to an online research community that a lot of large companies have, and at Air France KLM we also have it. But it's a little bit different in the sense that we use the platform of a traditional research community, but um, didn't, we didn't fill it with a set group of people that would be there for months or even years, but we set it up as an empty platform to fill it for temporary communities. So this is the KLM Lab is a platform, KLM branded, that we can use for temporary communities of a week or a month maximum. Uh, no moderator there. Business is moderating. We can invite customers that are relevant to us. So for instance, if we're building a new app, we will invite people who uh, have used our current app before and are about to make a trip and we'll invite them to partake in the, in the community. Or if we're building, uh, uh, working on our new booking tool on the website, then we will invite people who are looking for a flight. If we're building uh, a check-in flow, then we'll invite people who are about to check in. So for each topic, we want to invite new groups of people in there with their fresh minds, thinking along with us. So not people who know our product better than we do, we need to have fresh minds every time. Um, this platform enables us to be uh, quite fast. We can fill this platform within a week with fresh new customers, uh, selected by us along a certain criteria that I just mentioned, and then have them in the platform and have them talk to our business. And I'll give you an example of how that uh, works in, um, in a minute. So, what we wanted to achieve, we wanted to achieve speed. We also wanted to achieve customer friendliness. We didn't, had the, the platform that we were looking for needed to be really up to our standards from a digital department. So every part of the flow in this community needed to be excellent, which is still not always the case. I'll come back to that uh, later. Um, but then you also, I'll come back to that later before I go into uh, it. Um, so this is the skin of a, of a regular online uh, customer platform. You're probably all familiar with it, but we use it in a different way. And for me as a re researcher, that was quite an experiment because for one thing, what's going to happen when I let my business talk to our poor customers? Will they be using jargon? Will they be uh, treating our customers properly? Will they be able to really get out the insights that we need to have? That were my uh, worries uh, um, uh, in the beginning. And on the other hand, would customers like to do this? I mean, do you want to be in, in, a, in a temporary community for a week? Uh, or do customers prefer to be part of a community that runs for longer? That were the questions that we had uh, before. And I, I, I haven't found um, many examples like this. So for us, it was really learning by doing and just trying to see where we would uh, um, end up with this uh, project. So the agency, uh, uh, research agency built this platform for us and after that we took things into, uh, into our own hands. Um, the, the, the platform contains basic stuff like a discussion board, uh, a brainstorm feature, uh, you can do mood boarding with it, you can do polling with it. So all the basic features of a traditional MROC are, um, are in here. 
we also have, uh, are working with an external agency with it. So once things get too difficult for us, or when it's really about uh, uncovering the emotions in a certain customer journey phase, we can always uh, ask the agency to do the moderation for us. But the main idea of this uh, platform was actually to enable our business to talk with consumers directly. Because only then business can uh, often our uh, products and ideas are too detailed for me as a researcher or for moderators to really understand. When we're building a new app, it'll take too long for a moderator or for me to really understand the whole, all the features of the new app and to really understand what my business is worrying about or the questions that they have. So it's quite efficient to be able to have our business talk to customers directly because they, once a customer says something about I don't understand the interaction when I'm selecting a seat, for instance, during check-in. I won't have the knowledge to really understand uh, what the customer is talking about. The developers of the app, on the other hand, they'll know, okay, uh, the customer is talking about this page of the design. Uh, I'm going to ask the customer what steps he took before entering on the seat selection page to really understand the problems that he's encountering. So the advantage of having business talk to cons customers directly is that the business has a lot more knowledge of a complex product like an app or a website flow. The knowledge that I can uh, uh, get or a moderator can get, but it's not efficient. And also for me, I won't, uh, uh, um, it will be harder for me as a researcher to ask the right questions to our customers. While the developers and the product teams working on the app know, okay, maybe it's a matter of the device that the customer's using, or the browser that the customer's using, or hey, we know that there's a bug in the system, maybe the customers encountered that. So, combination of uh, knowledge of the product and customer works, um, works well uh, in this respect. So I'll show you a, a little uh, case of uh, how we use the new way of uh, market research online communities uh, to develop our products. Um, we have a large team working on our app. It's uh, quite a big thing for us. I think the th team is uh, 30 people uh, big with the be developers in it, uh, user experience managers in it, uh, the product owner, of course, all working to build the new app, KLM app. Uh, what they didn't have was the customer. They were building the new app and they would get feedback about the current app via social media, but they really didn't have any interaction with the customers about the new app that they were building. So we said to them, okay, let's try and use the KLM app to connect with customers while you are building the app. So uh, the case I'll show you is uh, the beta test of the app. And the beta test is uh, a test of the almost final product. A beta is something that's about to go live or has just gone live on a small scale. Um, so before the big product launch and the big communication, we asked our customers to, uh, to use a new app in beta and to, uh, to give us their feedback. And the main questions were about design and interaction. Do you understand what's happening in the app? Uh, do you understand its flows? Can you do everything that you want? Uh, another question that the team have had was, okay, are there any bugs and errors in this app that's going to be uh, show stoppers for putting it live? Uh, and of course, we also asked for missing features in the app. So can the app do anything, everything that you want as a customer or are you missing things? These were the questions that we asked in, uh, in the community. Uh, and we invited 100 customers um, who were about to take a flight. From our databases, we know who's going to fly when. So we invited 100 customers who we, of whom we knew were going to take a flight in the next uh, three days. We had a, the lab up and running for 10 days, so very temporary, 10 days. That was the time that the team uh, had to interact with customers uh, and where we, wanted, where we had customers using the new uh, app. Uh, this was actually the first uh, test and also the first case where we had actual business talking to customers. So I was, I was scared, uh, but it all worked uh, out quite well in, uh, in the end. 
the product team, so the business owner of the app, and uh, one other person did all the moderation in this community, which was actually quite a lot of work. And we, yeah, that's also expectation management that we need, need to do beforehand. It's a lot of work to do the moderation. Uh, but if it's a week or 10 days, then it's, uh, it's overseeable. Uh, and in the end, uh, it's worth it because you get uh, very detailed knowledge. So how did we do that? We uh, invited customers, so just send them an email, uh, try to, to, to incentivize them by saying, hey, be part of a special group, be part of the first group of people to use a new app. And this worked really well because customers love to help brands. They love to talk about products, they love to give their feedback, and it's also the fundamental principle about the, uh, behind this project. Um, and it was proven in, in this respect because the response to this email was overwhelming. People um, were really excited to be able to, uh, to see the new app for the first time, to see it in beta, and to also to be able to give their feedback uh, about it. So we asked them to download uh, the beta app, and we asked them to enroll into the, the KLM lab. And what happened then was actually quite, um, quite fun, because you'll see here a screenshot of a customer giving uh, feedback. And we noticed when we were doing the, 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 the project in the KLM lab that people were giving really detailed feedback and were just loving talking to business owners about the app. Here you'll see a screenshot of something that's uh, oh, not going right. Uh, and people were giving feedback like the animation of the spinner, the little thing that goes round and round when you need to wait, is not fluid. Okay, well, but for me, I'm like, uh, so what? But for the app team, those things are the things that they need to know and want to know. Um, quite detailed uh, feedback about design, uh, very detailed feedback about bugs and errors, uh, really surprising me because I hadn't really expected that customers to be so, yeah, tech savvy in this sense. But this is the sort of information that uh, the app team is looking for. Show you another example. It's a screenshot. It's a lot of text. You don't need to read it. But it actually says, um, uh, shows the feedback that we were getting about one of the main problems in the app, which was the seat map. Uh, when you check in, you can select your seat. And uh, interaction that the team had built to select the seat didn't work well. And this beta brought that uh, problem to light. And people were actually writing down also long stories about their experience in the app. And these long stories for me as a researcher who was not in the app team would not mean so much. But for uh, René, who's the head of the, the app team, he knows what they're talking about because he knows the app so well. Uh, René actually did a really very good job because he had quite a good tone of voice and had a good feeling of, of, of talking back to customers because it's a two-way street. Yeah, I, I told René beforehand, uh, okay, these people are going to tell you about your app and they're going to be uh, telling you lots of things. It's a commitment that we're going to do. You can't just take the feedback and run. No, you really need to give a, p a personal reply to all the feedback that you'll be getting. So this is what it was, of course, causing uh, him a lot of time. But also, what's the main advantage of the KLM Lab? real interaction with customers on a very detailed level about your product, which was very useful in the end to, uh, to uh, René. But that's also something I tell my business owners, okay, it's a two-way street. Hey, and, and maybe that's the, also the old style of doing research, take the feedback and run. You're, you're, we're, we're going into a commitment here, so you need to reply to all the customers, show them that we're taking them seriously, and also showing them that we're going to do something with their feedback. Or not, but then explain to them why not. Um, so this is a picture of uh, René, the business owner, uh, owner of the KLM app, which was also quite, uh, quite something that I was worried about in the beginning. Because here he is, this is his real name, it's not a, an avatar, it's, this is the, the owner of the app team. Uh, interacting with customers. So it's also about KLM being transparent, which is something that we try to do, also being reflected in research. 
Um, we, we took uh, the option to interact with customers under our own names, uh, which might not be feel comfortable for everyone. Uh, but I think as KLM, we want to show our customers what we're doing, we want to be transparent about things, we want to give them the right information always, and that always goes, also goes for, uh, for research, uh, I think. Uh, of course, we did give Renee a little bit of training beforehand, so he wouldn't use uh, too much uh, jargon that we as uh, KLM uh, airline people are so very, uh, very good at. Um, but in the end, we, had a, we ran a very uh, successful pilot. Um, we also noticed, noticed that customers loved it. They loved give their, giving their opinion, and they loved the feeling that they were taking, uh, being taken seriously. Um, the funny thing is also I noticed that the quality of the feedback was different to lab testing that we of course also do. We talk to a lot of our customers in the lab in a face-to-face -face situation showing them new designs, showing them new website elements, whatever. Um, and by chance they had also done a lab test for the app before. And the funny thing was that the results different, differed uh, quite a bit. Uh, for instance, some of the interactions that was, was not understood in the lab didn't pose any problems in this test. And I think that's because the lab situation is so artificial that it'll deliver different results than this situation where we try to be as relevant and non-artificial as possible, inviting people who are about to fly who would actually take the beta app on their trip and use it. So this delivered quite different uh, uh, result. Um, so in the end, uh, what we learned, uh, for us this was a new, new project. We have a traditional MROC in place, uh, not too suitable for the digital needs, tried something new, and we learned a lot. Um, I think this is something we will continue, continue to do in the future, um, but uh, we also learned that it's not suitable for just any topic. It needs to be something that's sort of cool maybe, like an app. People love to, to, to think along with us about the app. Uh, so it needs to be something that uh, resonates with the customers. Uh, also, we learned that the commitment of the business team is actually crucial. It's not take the feedback and run. You really need to be committed as a business owner, be transparent, answer to every question, and, and, and give feedback back to the customers. But in the end, we were quite happy because this is a fast tool. Uh, it's relatively cheap, uh, 5K per uh, project uh, generally, depending uh, on the scope. Um, something that we did run into was that the current market research platforms doesn't seem to be adhering to the highest standards that are out there. Because we noticed that, for instance, logging into the community we were using standard agency software for that. It's really not a very nice look and feel. It doesn't look cool. It's not easy to do. That's not something that we want as KLM. We want to have a community that's also very super user, easy to use and a super cool design. So this is something that research agencies may, um, may uh, think about. Um, yeah, so something that, all in all, we experimented with it uh, uh, this year, had a successful run, I continue uh, to do so. Um, now, I hope this may uh, inspire some of you here, or hey, maybe you can learn from our, uh, our, uh, our projects as well.